I, I hope he's patient, but ultimately I think that's a dead end job for him. What's up guys? Welcome back to Charge the Game Podcast and it is football season. So that means a lot of college and a lot of NFL games to be covered. But we all know the main topic of college football right now is Deion Sanders. Let's get into this take as a lot of people are out on Deion Sanders. I want you guys to get in here, subscribe to the YouTube channel, thumbs up, like the video. Let's go. I think being in Boulder, Colorado, I don't like his chances, Paul, you know, Paul Feinbaum, but your thoughts about primetime Deion Sanders and what that program is going to do. Now, guys, before we let Paul Feinbaum, who this guy does not sugarcoat, even get into it, let's discuss what's going on. So Deion Sanders is obviously the main gate attraction in college sports and his reputation, his stardom, uh, all of the hype has flowed and spun down and it is no longer boiling. It is at a very low simmer. And a lot of people who were on a hype train of Deion Sanders, as I told you guys, you guys remember me, I was a guy coming out criticizing Deion because I'm old school. And a lot of his antics and the way that he is, this isn't a black man hate on a black man, so don't come at me with that shit. This is just reality. And I'm telling you guys that Deion Sanders is running a complete circus show. Does he have superb talent in Shador Sanders and Travis Hunter? Of course. Jordan Seaton? Of course. We'll see about Jordan Seaton. But Shiloh Sanders? Eh. And I don't really know too many other names right now to criticize them because there's a lot of people leaving the Colorado Buffaloes because of all of the BS and all of the antics that is going on. A lot of players have left saying that it's all about clicks and bait. There's a lot of favoritism with his sons. As we got as we all would expect, you know, you know, from a distance, we can kind of see that a lot of the players say that Dion is late. He's never on time. And this is just the articles that have been released. This is not my opinion, guys. The only thing that I criticize Deion Sanders for is being very selfish uh refusing to let his youth go uh and kind of being a joke of a coach and i don't think that it's fair that he gets a lot of the coverage that a lot of not only the black coaches but the coaches who have actually won big in college sports so let's see what paul fonbon is about to say well, they owned the college football season last year for about five weeks and, and some of it was predicated on, on, on upsetting tcu and then beating nebraska uh having people like you cannon uh, the Rock others show up and it just infused so much energy that everybody wanted to watch them and then when they went off the cliff uh, people turned away and and guys what did I tell you I told y'all last season when everybody was getting mad at me calling me out talking this smack in my comment section oh 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 black guy hating on another black guy but never really get mad when anybody else critique black people it's crazy how black people get mad at black people for just keeping it real oh well I'm gonna tell you guys the truth and the fact of the matter is a lot of the world is a in the moment type of place, right? We live in times where everybody wants to be on a hype train. Everybody wants to say this. Everybody wants to say that everybody is a prisoner of the moment. And I told you guys that Deion Sanders was using his clout so that ESPN could go on the road. You know, ESPN, I will give this to Stephen A. Smith. He does normally go to HBCUs, which I don't believe that Colorado Buffs are a HBCU they in fact the PWI but we all know that they got on the train to support their boy uh Deion Sanders I'm quite sure Shannon Sharp led that charge uh they seem to be very close friends now let's talk about Skip Bayless uh a guy who has never left the set all of a sudden is on tour going to colleges and to, and to make sure that he follows suit because he knew his career was taking a spiral he wanted to go on campus and be with Deion Sanders because he saw what the ratings did first take Meanwhile, it developed a lot of animosity towards Deion Sanders and the Colorado Buffaloes. And now a lot of coaches pretty much have it out for them. They want to see his misery. They want to see his downfall. And if I'm being honest, what human wouldn't? I mean, like here comes a guy that is pretty much taking a shine. And you guys have been winning national championships. We don't see Nick Saban and all these other people get this type of coverage. Only when it's... The playoffs or they won a championship in fact it's probably because it's a huge distraction and that's why you have all of these kids well, who aren't really taking football serious they're there for cloud they're there to meet the celebrities and Deion sanders is feeding off of that 
He's like, I know my program isn't good, but let me make the school look good, which I totally understand, but that can only work for so long. And now we see that the covers are off and the truth has been revealed. And a lot of people do not think that Deion Sanders is going to be good this season. I'm actually, and I said it last season, I think that they're going to be slightly worse. I would be surprised if they topped their record from last year because there's too much things going on in the background and all the reports that are coming out. I know that they got Warren Sapp, but it takes a lot to keep a program um, under stability and maintained. And I think that with all the mood swings, Lord forbid that Shador Sanders gets hurt uh, because I really want to see him sustain a, a good season. I do think that he's a good uh, I think he's a, a, a B minus quarterback. I don't think that he just jumps off of the screen. No matter how many people in the media hype Shador Sanders, I don't see it the way that a lot of people do. And I went to Jackson State. Okay. So before you guys think I'm hating, I'm just giving you guys the facts. Back this season, Stephen A., and I think that's going to frustrate uh, Coach Prime. Yep. I, I have great respect for him. Uh, he's, he's recruited a lot of amazing players. I mean, Travis Hunter might be the best player in the country, but it's not enough. Mm. Uh, and, and, and it just, it, it, the league is easier this year being in the Big 12, but he's still, uh, to be relevant, uh, has to be a playoff contender, and I don't think they are. In the so, what do you guys think about this? He said that even though they have Travis Hunter, who is uh one of the best players in the country i'm not going to say he's the best player in the country uh the guy is a buck 20 looks like but he is superb at both dual positions uh and i think that that kid honestly has a great head on his shoulder i honestly think that he represents the organization the program a very great way but what do you guys think about paul fonbaum pretty much you see when a guy doesn't really want to hurt your feelings look at paul fonbaum look at like he's like looking to the side like he doesn't really want to look at the camera because he knows that Stephen A. Smith is a dear friend to Deion Sanders which Deion Sanders doesn't really trust come on now Deion Sanders doesn't really trust Stephen A. Smith because he knows that he's a snake but anyway he he uses him and they use each other so Paul Falbaugh is saying it in a nice way that Deion Sanders is not going to be the guy that we saw uh when the hype was we saw them beat TCU and everybody was like oh yeah he we're here we're here and as the season went on you guys didn't see lebron james making those tweets anymore you guys didn't see a lot of these players who just jumped on the bandwagon who prop who don't even really watch the game like that it was laughable guys but we're going to see now i saw uh, that Deion Sanders still brings the celebrities that's something that he's going to do but i don't know if that's what it's going to take to make these players play their best it takes something else you can't bring a superstar around and think like, oh, I needed this to perform. You need a good coach. You need a great program. And hopefully that's what Deion Sanders is offering. But being that he has Instagram name tags or hashtags and uh, dogs and leaders as the captain, he, he's trying too hard to stand out. Maybe he's just being himself. But I think that is just too much distraction. OK, call me old school. Call me what you guys want. But I I agree with Paul Feinbaum. <laughs> Enough games where they're no longer part of the conversation. I think we will all move on uh, to those who, who matter most, and I think that will drive him crazy. Uh, I agree with you. You put him uh, in any number of places, and he can he can recruit the talent. You can only recruit a limited amount of talent with uh, to, to Boulder. So I, I I hope he's patient, but ultimately I think that's a dead end job for him. Now, why do you guys think that Stephen A. Smith is trying to jump on this? We saw the reports where. Deion Sanders could be linked to USC. Okay, guys, maybe he recruited uh, Warren Sapp to come be the coach so that he can pivot and leave and the school can still be in good standing. Trust me, he did the same thing to my alumni. So <laughs> it's not like I don't see what this guy is doing. Now, I want to pay attention to something that Paul Feinbaum said here. And he said that it's going to drive Deion Sanders crazy that he isn't relevant. And I want you guys to think about that as... It makes sense this guy is a diva uh i think that he's a phenomenal player i think that he's a phenomenal father i think that there's a lot that hasn't reached the surface yet and there's a lot of rumors about certain things but it's like that about a lot of things including myself so who am i to to speak on that but what i will speak on is i know that this guy is a complete diva and i know that he loves the limelight i also know that he doesn't know how to let his youth go Deion Sanders wants to live his life through Shiloh and Shador. 
I mean, that's not that doesn't mean that he's a great father. It's just pick and choose. Are you going to be a coach? You're going to be a coach. You want to wear chains and you want to like dress like the the young guys on your team. You gotta let that go. You have to be more of a a a a more dominant coach figure in these kids' life. I don't see any of these coaches. I don't see a Mike Tomlin doing this. Uh, in fact, I see him always wearing a, a one chain with a cross on it because he's a Christian guy. Seems like. Uh, don't see who are Andy Reid doing these type of things like because you have to have a certain look and I know a lot of people especially in my community they're going to come out and criticize me but let's be honest if you guys went to a doctor and he had bling bling on would you let him operate on you if you guys were getting on a plane and a guy had bling bling on and said call me Captain Prime I'm about to fly you and your family six hours overseas to another country hold your breath would that make you feel good? If, in fact, we had a president to have iced out stuff on saying, call me President Prime, that actually sounds catchy, but would that really win people over? So let's be logical here, guys. Just like the quarterback is a political position, do you guys find it ironic that Shador Sanders cut that fucking hair off? No. Do you guys find it ironic that Jalen Hurts, Eagles, my favorite team, he had dreads in college, went to the NFL, cut his hair. It's a better look. We all saw how Cam Newton entered the league, and when he grew that wild shit, what happened? It's just, it is, it's, it's not a racist thing. It is what it is. You need to fit the par. And I'm old school like that, and I certainly believe in looks are everything. Because you guys know, like I know, a lot of you guys who are advocating for this, if your daughter walked a guy inside his home, he said, call me Mr. Prime. You'd be like, bro, get your ass up out of here. I was just being honest. And that's what people don't like to project or think about when they are thinking about Deion Sanders. And I just happen to be one of those people, guys. So anyway, not one of those people that don't see through the bull job, but just a realist. And Paul Feinbaum is telling the complete truth. Believe that he'll ultimately get a job at a big time program, or do you believe that times are going to be so rough that it could ruin his future prospects of getting a job at a big-time program. I think ADs know what he's capable of. Uh, now, some will not hire him. You know that, and I know that. Uh, but, but there are a, there are athletic directors out there at, at good schools who, who, need, who need a change agent who I think will take the chance. It's, but by the way, not a chance. Make, make a very smart move. I think there are a lot of places that he could completely turn, turn it upside down where he would have a legitimate chance. Uh, by the way, Auburn's another school that could have had him uh, two years ago. They ended up hiring Hugh Freeze, who, who was run out of the business uh, eight or nine years ago at Ole Miss. But uh, somebody some, somebody will take a chance on him, and I think they'll be rewarded. Uh, I give Colorado credit for trying. He's changed that. He's made that place at least a conversation piece, but ultimately it's still Colorado, and they are never, even with, even with De Deion Sanders, going to be a significant player in college football. Wow. 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 Stephen A. Smith knows exactly what he's doing. I got to give him that, man. This guy is talented. But this speaks volume because the truth of the matter is, it sounds like Deion Sanders has worn his welcome out in the Colorado Buffalo, see straight through it. And a lot of these coaches work together. A lot of these schools, they are lock and step. They're in group messages. And uh, a lot of those assistant coaches that left, the players that are going to their school, leaking all of this stuff about Deion Sanders is only going to get worse and worse and worse. They're going to it's going to keep spiraling out of control. And it's not going to be anything Deion Sanders can do about it to replenish his reputation. And I would be shocked if a big school took another opportunity on Deion Sanders because we all see that the glitz, the glams, and the primetime effect simply does not work, nor is it sustainable long enough to keep uh, people involved. I think that he's going to always be Coach Prime. He's always going to have a sporadic effect, great charisma, a great person, uh, as far as like, you know, like what he can do for your program. But winning football is something that Deion Sanders is going to need a little bit more work on. Your thoughts? Let me know what you guys feel about this. It's college football season. It's NFL football season. So expect more football conversations from me. You guys hit me in the comment section, guys. I love to hear your thoughts. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And I will see you in the next one. Peace. Yeah.